Hi everyone, this is Dr. Young, uh, Western Civilization 1 at uh, Flagler College. Um, the purpose of this video is to uh, kind of go over the midterm uh, examination, uh, offer a little bit of review for that. Um, you're certainly welcome to uh, send any questions you have my way uh, about the midterm, but um, this goes over the basics, uh, the kinds of questions you're going to see on the midterm and how to approach these. Uh, so hopefully this will be helpful. Um, I ask two kinds of questions on both the midterm and the final. Uh, the first kind of question is called the identification terms, uh, and the second uh, involves analyzing, uh, identifying and analyzing um, texts that we have looked at in class and images. Um, and so I, you know, I want to kind of go over how to approach each of these. Um, you'll see this on the instructions on the exam. I'll, I'll sort of replicate uh, what I'm saying here. Let's start with identification terms. So um, uh, you'll see a number of identification terms on the exam. Uh, and for each uh, question that you write, you need to write a, a, a paragraph essay. Um, uh, this is not a short answer thing. Um, and it's not just a sentence or two either. This is a substantial paragraph that includes three things. And I've identified the three things here. First is a definition of the term itself. Um, and that might take you one or two or three sentences. Um, but your essay is not done there because each of these terms is like a peg to hang a larger picture on. Uh, and that larger picture is the historical context. Now, I have an example term that I'm going to go over here, which is uh, the Nile River. Um, and, uh, you know, you uh, the, the Nile River is a question not just about the Nile River, but really about ancient Egypt. Uh, and one might even extend from there to, you know, in, in class we talk uh, a lot about, we draw a comparison between ancient Egypt and ancient Mesopotamia. And so you could incorporate some of that comparison into your essay. Uh, really, what I'm looking for here is uh, an understanding of historical context. Um, hopefully, that term is uh, in, in, you know intensely familiar to you at this point. Uh, but historical context um, and uh, also an explanation of how this this thing, this term, uh, whether it's a person, uh, an event, um, an institution, or, or whatever it is fits into the historical context of that particular time and place. Um, and so that's going to be the bulk of your essay. You know, you're going to need several sentences probably to flesh out the historical context. Uh, and then the third part of this, the third component of this paragraph, is a statement of significance. So once you have defined the term and placed it in its historical context, then you need to offer some kind of analysis of why this term is important. And there are two ways to approach the question of significance. The first is influence over time. What influence did this have on that civilization? Um, you know, uh, when it was, I mean, in the time period we're talking about, or maybe over, you know, multiple historical layers of Western civilization. Uh, one way not to approach the question of significance, by the way, um, is a kind of throwaway answer that I have seen many, many times over the years, uh, which is, and this still continues to influence us today. Um, I find that problematic uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, if we're talking about something that was influential 2,000 years ago, we cannot, you know, automatically assume that it continues to influence us today. Right, so, so don't don't approach it that way. That's a throwaway answer. That's not going to earn you any points. But if you can show that a an institution, a person, an event, or something like that was uh, significant over a you know a, a wide range of time, uh, over a century or two or three or whatever it was, then yeah, go ahead and and uh, write that into your essay. Uh, a second way to approach the question of significance, and by the way, these are not mutually exclusive. Um, you can write, uh, you know, a, a sentence about how this thing is influential over time and uh, also uh, deal with the question of, you know, how it's representative of broader historical trends. But, you know, these essays and this class in general are all about making connections. Um, and so uh, one of the ways to approach the question of significance is uh, to determine 
you know, in what ways this term is representative of broader historical trends? Does it fit into something, kind of a longer story that we've talked about? Is this a good example of, you know, this, this general trend that we discussed? Um, you know, so if, you know, we had a, uh, I don't know, a, a question on, um, say, Marius uh, from the Roman Republic. Um, uh, that's a, a, you know, a term that I've used on exams uh, over the years from time to time. Uh, you know, Marius' uh, significance might be that he is representative of the you know, kind of the major uh, political trends that are happening in the late Republic. He's, you know, one of the Pupilates. He's uh, really kind of the forerunner of the, the notion that a client army will get you um, uh, far politically in, in Rome, uh, which others follow after him. So that's, you know, that's more his influence over time. But, but he is a representative example of you know, the kinds of political intrigue and tensions that existed in the late Roman Republic. And so if you could, if you could say all that in an essay, then you would do well. Really, the statement of significance is um, an effort on the part of the, the essay writer to offer some analysis uh, you know, to determine why this thing, this term, is important. Okay, so um, before I talk about the, the second kind of question, I, I wanted to briefly sort of give an, an example of uh, how I would approach this if I were um, uh, preparing for this exam. So I've got a sample term here, which is very generic. It's just the Nile River, right? And so if I were preparing for this exam, uh, I would take all of the... Um, you know, the, the uh, essays on, on the review guide, so if you're taking this in a regular class, or, you know, look at the, at the, the um, uh, identification terms on the take-home exam if you're, if you're taking this in a, in a summer online term or something. And, um, and then I would write down everything I could think of that was connected in some way to the Nile River, you know, sort of flesh out the context of ancient Egypt, uh, and so, you know, uh, concerning the Nile itself, we talked about um, uh, the, the uh, sorry, going to put up with my typing here, the flooding, uh, the predictability, the, um, uh, the fact that the river was navigable, right, um, that it was very easy to get boats uh, uh, from, you know, one part of the river to another, um, uh, that uh, the Nile lay in this uh, protected space between the desert to the west and the mountains and desert to the east. Uh, there were also uh, cataracts to the south, um, that is the rapids that made it so it was difficult to get from, you know, the interior of Africa into the Nile Valley, um, uh, and that it, you know, it, it provided the fertility of the soil. Um, and so, you know, the, those are all uh, things related to the Nile itself, right? But then I would go beyond the Nile and talk about ancient Egypt, right? The political system, uh, the, the, you know, this was, the, uh, Egypt was ruled by a pharaoh um, who was a, a, a god king. Um, and that, uh, you know, the, the connection here would be that he used uh, the Nile uh, flooding um, to, and sort of took credit uh to credit for the flood, and you know that lent the support to the idea that he was in fact a divine being, that he was a god in human form. Um, you know, some of the other things that we said about Egypt was that uh, Egypt had a, a real superiority complex. Um, they thought they were superior to all other peoples, and that had a lot to do with the Nile. You might even draw in um, one of the texts that we talked about. You know, the hymn to the Nile discusses that, um, and maybe even you know cite some examples from that as part of uh, part of what you're trying to do here. Um, the, uh, um, you know, the, the Egyptians had an obsession with the afterlife and uh, the Nile was included in their in their version of the afterlife. Um, you've got this example of King Tut, uh, who, you know, we looked at some of the grave goods in, in class and one of those included a boat. Um, so that might be an example you could throw in there. Um, uh, so anyway, you may get the idea here, and you might even go, um, you know, outside of this and compare with uh, Mesopotamia, um, which of course was a very different kind of civilization. And so you talk about the Tigris 
and uh, Euphrates, uh, the unpredictable, can't spell here, unpredictable flooding of those rivers, uh, the constant uh, warfare, um, uh, the lack of um, uh, natural boundaries, uh, the fact that these were city-states rather than than large kingdoms. Um, and so, you know, you might even draw some of that into your essay. Now, once you have, and this is not an exhaustive list, by the way, these are just a few things that I could think of off the top of my head that I might, in, you know, potentially include in an essay about the Nile River. Um, and so, uh, you know, then I would start constructing sentences out of this, right? So start with a definition. The Nile River was uh, the lifeblood of ancient Egypt. Uh, it's, uh, it was particularly um, important to Egypt because it flooded predictably every year and provided the, the fertile soil that the Egyptians would need for growing their food all year round. Uh, it lay in a protected valley um, that uh, uh, had uh, the Sahara Desert to the west and, and uh, deserts and mountains of the Sinai Peninsula and the, the eastern desert to the east. Also cataracts on the Nile uh, to the south um, that made it so people from the interior of Africa were not able to invade uh, Egypt at any point. Uh, thus the Egyptians um, it had a, a river that, that provided uh, the, all of the food that they would need uh, for the whole year round, while at the same time uh, offering protection to them from invasion. Um, this lent its, uh, you know, so that it, that's... That goes sort of beyond the definition and starts to get into the context. Um, you know, then we might want to talk more about the context by saying uh, the Nile River was uh, tremendously influential on Egyptian culture, um, uh, particularly their views of the afterlife, which featured uh, the Nile River. Uh, the Egyptians believed that the afterlife uh, was just an extension of this life, and so it was necessary for them to uh, to have the things that they would need in order to uh, work with the Nile. Um, uh, one example comes from the tomb, the tomb of King Tutankhamun, uh, where um, among the grave goods, uh, archaeologists have found model boats that uh, were supposedly for um, for sailing along the Nile in the afterlife. Um, and then, you know, maybe this comparison with Mesopotamia, uh, Egypt um, was vastly different from uh, the other major ancient civilization of the Near East, uh, Mesopotamia. Um, whose rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates, flooded at unpredictable times during the year, causing uh, frequent destruction of crops uh, and homes. This led to... Uh, Mesopotamia also featured... Uh, um, it was a land that had, didn't have strong natural boundaries, and thus uh, there was constant warfare between city-states. Uh, you know, rather than the, um, the, the divine being who ruled Egypt, uh, the uh, Mesopotamians had... Uh, rulers of city-states who, um, if they failed to provide for their people, would be removed forcibly from them, from uh, their positions. Um, and, you know, anyway, this could sort of go on, right? Now, uh, if we want to offer some kind of significance, uh, I mean, the broad historical trend here is that the Nile River, um, you know, is this, this contrast with the Tigris and Euphrates. The, the Nile really was the lifeblood of Egyptian civilization. Uh, strongly contrasts... Um, with uh, the, uh, the the rivers of Mesopotamia, uh, it was uh, probably the source of um, the it was the, the most important source, I should say, of or the most important influence on the Egyptian political system, featuring the god king Pharaoh uh, and on the culture of the Nile, including the uh, the views of the afterlife. Right. So, I mean, we're we're in some sense restating what we said, but we're we're simply trying to identify why this is an important feature. Um, and, and one of the things that we could say about this is that the Nile provided so much stability that Egyptian society really didn't change for uh, upwards of 2,000 years. That might be, you know, the best thing we could say about the significance of this term. Okay, so, I mean, hopefully you're getting the vision of, of what a, one of these essays entails. We're talking about a, a really substantial paragraph here. Um, you should think about, you know, taking up a, a page or so, uh, um, the equivalent of a page if you're handwriting this or, you know, I don't know, a, a single spaced half page or something like that. Uh, eight, nine, ten, maybe even twelve sentences, depending on the term. 
Um, this is not something you can dash off in, in a couple of minutes and, and feel good that you have defined uh, what the term is. Um, you need to make these connections. Okay, uh, the second kind of question that I ask um, on uh, my Western Civ exams um, are text and image identification and expl explication uh, questions. Uh, and so I will give you a text, and by that I don't mean the entire first book of the Odyssey uh, or something like that. I'm going to give you um, probably no more than three or four paragraphs. Maybe not even that. Maybe only one or two paragraphs of a text. These might not be contiguous. Um, if you see dot, dot, dot after the first paragraph, it means that I'm skipping something and going to another part of the text. Uh, so I'm giving you some snippets from one of the texts that we have looked at. Uh, alternately, um, I will give you uh, an image. I'll just place an image on there. And the instructions will say to write uh, an essay, two to three paragraph essay, um, which does the following. And then there are three things that I want you to do in this essay. First of all, you need to identify this. Uh, identify the text. Give its title. Um, uh, give its author if the author is known. Otherwise, say that this is an anonymous author from ancient Mesopotamia or something like that. Uh, and you might even talk about, um, I should say here, uh, the... Um, the time period that it comes from, maybe, right? Um, uh, so, you know, th those are all part of the identification, uh, anything you can say about that, and that's going to get you one or two sentences, right? Um, the, the rest of the first paragraph here uh, should involve historical context. And so you need to do something similar to what you do in the identification terms, um, and that is you need to... Uh, uh, you know, talk about the historical context of the term. This is this is also a peg to hang a larger picture on. So if you have, you know, the rape of Lucretia by Livy as your as your text that you're trying to explicate, um, you're going to talk about the context of the Roman Republic um, and and uh, this whole uh, legend that they had about the overthrow of the monarchy and the establishment of the Republic, right? Um, and so you'd want to talk about honor. You'd want to talk about uh, the political structures a little bit and the social structures. Uh, of the Republic just to, you know, really kind of flesh out before you start to analyze uh, the text itself. And so resist the urge to jump right into the text and begin explaining it. I want you to flesh out the historical context first. Now, in a, in a second paragraph, and really you're looking at two paragraphs here, you're then going to identify in the text that I, or the image that I give you uh, three or four points to talk about. Now, this doesn't you know, mean that you can't talk about some other part of the text uh, that's not specifically on the test, but I, d I do want you to identify things from the text or image itself. Um, you know, if you have uh, the um, an image of uh, Petra, for instance, you know, you're going to uh, find uh, three or four points to talk about. You, you talk about the Greek uh, architectural features and, you know, maybe some of the Nabataean features, the urn and the eagles or something, and if you know, there's a picture of Petra that has the, um, uh, the the crow step or some of these other features that you see. You'd want to talk about those too, right? Um, uh, so let's look at an example. Now I'm just going to go to the web browser um, and look at uh, one of the texts that's assigned for the class, which is the Shipwreck Sailor. Um, uh, and so, you know, I might put, um, gosh, let's just see. Um, So I might put, you know, like this paragraph and this paragraph or something like that. Um, and then maybe, you know, skip down. I put dot, 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 um, and then do um, uh, this paragraph and this paragraph or something. Okay, so, you know, that's that's four paragraphs. That's the size of the text that you, you probably are going to see on the exam, right? And what you want to do is go through that text and say, Okay, we've got this um, this snake that comes to this guy who's shipwrecked. Um, why is there a snake there? And so maybe that's your first point of analysis, right? That you know, there's this uh, this snake comes to this guy who's washed up on this island in the middle of the Mediterranean, and, and uh, you know, you um, uh, even though a modern audience might see this as threatening, the Egyptians didn't see a, a gigantic snake necessarily as threatening, because for them nature was benevolent. Uh, nature provided everything they needed, and so, you know, 
the, the snake says, what has brought you? What has brought you, little one? What has brought you? I, uh, if you say not speedily, what has brought you to this isle? I will make you know yourself. Um, and so, you know, the, the snake is genuinely interested in, in helping this poor shipwrecked man, right? Um, he took me in his mouth and carried me to his resting place. So, again, the, the benevolence of nature is what's going on here. So, you know, you want to draw these points out. Um, oh, and then down here, where nothing, uh, uh, for it is he, God, who has brought you to this isle of the blessed, where nothing is lacking and which is filled with all good things. Uh, see now, you should pass one month after another until you should be four months in this isle. Then a ship shall come uh, from your land with sailors, and you shall leave them and go to your country, and you shall die in your town, right? So, first of all, you want to um, maybe talk about the, uh, you know, the, the fact that in Egypt, um, the land provided everything that the Egyptians needed um, for for this, the sustenance of life. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a, an explanation of this particular part of the text. Um, then there's also this, this notion that, you know, water, um, that, uh, even the sea is not necessarily threatening because there are ships going on. So the Egyptians participated in, in kind of widespread commerce. Maybe that's a, an analytical point you want to draw out. So really, again, you're looking for three or four points to talk about and discuss and, and really kind of explain what they mean based on the historical context, Right. Why would the Egyptians see uh, this gigantic snake not as threatening? Well, it's because they thought nature was benevolent. Uh, why does the island uh, provide everything they need? Well, in Egypt, you know, the Nile uh, and the land that it flooded provided everything they needed in terms of food and, and drink and everything like that. Um, uh, you know, then he, you know, why, why is he certain that a ship is going to come? Well, he's a divine being, and you know, the divine beings controlled everything in the world and, and knew everything. Uh, but also uh, Egypt participated in, in commerce, and so it was it was a regular thing for Egyptian ships to be you know, to be seen out on the Mediterranean Sea. Um, uh, even though they you know tended to keep in the Nile, there there's a lot of evidence the Egyptians did trade with people. For instance, the the people of Crete during the Minoan period. Uh, so maybe you want to you know talk about that a little bit. So you're going to have this paragraph where you you give these analytical points, right? Um, if you're if it's not a text but an an, an image. Um, you know, you're going to uh, point out, um, let's do a Google search here uh, for Petra, go to some images, um, and, uh, you know, see, the one that I really like to put on the exams is, yeah, this one, okay. Um, and so, you know, after you flesh out the context of Petra, talk about the Hellenistic period and cultural fusion and all of that, you're going to you know, try to find three or four points to talk about. Um, you have the Corinthian columns here, and so you want to mention that this is Greek architectural influence. You've got the triangular pediment up here and the lintel. I mean, these are quintessential uh, Greek um, architectural features. But you also have up here the Mesopotamian urn, or not, or sorry, the Nabataean urn. Uh, so this comes from the, the native uh, people of, of Petra. And then over here, you've got the crow step, right? Um, which is a Mesopotamian thing. And so you got these, these several cultures, uh, architectural forms and, and religious symbols, um, uh, you know, all portrayed on this one image. Um, you also have the Roman arches here from when the Romans added uh, this later on. So, um, you know, you'd want to talk about each of those and explain why they're there, right? Okay, well, hopefully that gives you a, a good indication of, of how to approach these questions, how to write this exam. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to address them in class, or if this is an online class, feel free to address them on the discussion board or email me personally or, or whatever it is. Um, thank you. Uh, good luck on the exam.